Jay Glazer remains at the top of a very competitive game. Very few anywhere in sports journalism or in the information business have better contacts or more information than Jay Glazer. Uh, thank you, as always, for joining us, Jay. I will remind people, Unbreakable is his mental health podcast. Uh, he is getting great freedom and uh, liberation from showing people his vulnerabilities and showing them that they are not alone with some of the uh, dark thoughts that plague us. Uh, thank you, Jay, as always, for making the time for us. Got a lot of football that I want to get to with you, but before we do that, I want to show him some video here of an avalanche broadcaster, Stugatz, uh, Mark Rycroft, uh, by accident during a game. They are just televising the game. We do not have uh, the sound that you need here, but you can see the video of the disgust he accidentally drinks from the cup of tobacco spit that oh. his partner was spitting into a cup he thought he was drinking coffee and instead he drinks uh, his partner's tobacco spit jay it looks like you have a story here you're you're profoundly yeah. disgusted by this but also enjoying it yeah profoundly disgusted so here's you know i think seventh grade first time i tried copenhagen and put it in uh, my mouth and teacher walked in a room and I just had no choice but to just drink it all up. And that, thankfully, got me to make sure I never did chewing tobacco ever again. Oh, one of the worst experiences of my life. That's oh, how, oh. My dad taught me the same way. This was a weird... Oh, really? Yeah, well, baseball players had these big chaws in their mouth, and yeah. I was bothering my dad for years about it. And then we're just walking through a supermarket. He's tired of me bothering about it. So he just reaches into a bag of Copenhagen, doesn't teach me how to do it, sticks it in my mouth, and <laughs> leaves the bag of Copenhagen there open on the shelf. And I, of course, swallowed it because I didn't want to spit up, and it was terrible. And I was oh. 43 years old. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Waiting for it. Baby. I think, hey, mine was, I think I had to do it for like, what was class? Class was probably for like an hour. So I had to just sit there and just drink this for an hour. Oh, man. No, it'll make you dizzy and it's horrible. But drinking from your partner's cup, though, as horrible That's as. even worse. No, it's even worse to drink. Yeah, especially because right. you probably know where your partner's been. Yeah. How, how about being a chaw dog during an NHL broadcast? Oh, that is terrible. gnarly. Oh. Oh, that is terribly yeah. unpleasant. Look at that. You know how hard it is to discuss Jay Glazer? Look at him. He's cringing. He's yeah. wincing. He's <laughs> what yes, do we because I am filthy, so that takes a lot. Yes. What what other uh liquors or substances can I get you to recoil that way on? Because I drank too much Rumpelmins in college. Yeah, one time. I would say um I would say Jaegermeister for me, because I was doing that with uh, I was doing Jaeger and Rumble Mints and Fireball together. Oh, oh God. Jay. college. Jay, Jay. 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 Yeah, that wasn't good. I think I threw up on my shoe or something like that. It wasn't great. <laughs> you went rumple mitts in college, yeah, Dan, with wait, the gold look flakes? Look at what I he mean. just did. Well, I I'm didn't. Bartending. Yeah, I didn't know that it was peppermint schnapps. I didn't know it was 100 proof. But you just mixed a concoction of three awfuls. Yeah. Jägermeister, horrible. you're trying to punish yourself there, Jay. Yeah, That's horrible. I didn't know it at the time. I was too drunk to know I was punishing myself. Let's talk some football here with Jay. The Tepper situation in Carolina. Is this funny to you? Oh, you're shaking, no. you're shaking your head. No, no, not funny at all. No, absolutely not. Now, first of all, you know, you, I think you asked me a couple of weeks ago, who's the worst meddlers in the league? And he, he's top. Um, but then to go and throw, you know, we're, look, we're, we, we're just coming out of a COVID era, era too, when people are a lot more sensitive to throwing <laughs> germs at other people. And you do that in disgust uh, at fans. These are the people who are paying for all of us to have jobs. No, it's it's unacceptable. And I think owners should get held to a, a, dip, a higher level than anybody else. But that's ridiculous. Like, listen, there are, there's been a lot of frustrated owners over the years. Uh, they don't go and take their drinks and throw them on fans because they're disgusted. Just and grow up. That's ridiculous. Jay, though, I, I will explain to people. We were talking before you came on here. I was saying, man, this shadowy world of billionaires that somehow can keep all of their reckless behavior private. Uh, yeah. uh, can you explain to people just how poorly behaved uh, this club of men can be in, in private? Because Tepper owns hey, the team. No, I'm not doing that. Why? I'm not out and people. What are you kidding me? <laughs> ah, no, no. You got somebody else that question. I'm not out and how bad a bunch of, <laughs> a bunch of billionaires could be. <laughs> but you know, but you know, it, can you speak in general terms though about the power in this sport? How it is that they're able to keep everything quiet while it is we report on everything else? That yeah. franchise in particular, Jay Tepper's in charge at least because they they yeah. quietly escorted the previous guy out. Yeah, well, didn't, no, they didn't quietly escort the previous guy out. The other guy got booted out. Um, 
And, you know, but yeah, but Tepper's behavior is just, it, it's awful. It's ridiculous. What, you know, I, it's not like they're going to say, okay, we can force a guy to sell because he threw a drink on somebody, but they should definitely hit him really hard. Um, they should treat him with a harsher discipline than any other fan has ever been hit with for something like that. Uh, Jay, with Michigan beating Alabama, do you feel like Jim Harbaugh is closer to staying at Michigan or closer to going to the NFL? I think he's, you know, dabbled the last couple of years. I think this year, especially because him being in the world and controversy like that, he might just say, you know what, I'm tired of it, out of it, I'm done. He had two controversies earlier this year. I think he would be more inclined to go after. And I say go after one of those jobs because it's different, like, I think in the past, Jim Harbaugh was kind of interviewed for jobs, almost like um, he's interviewing them to see if he wanted to go there. And really, when you go after these jobs, you got to sell yourself. It doesn't matter who you are. You got to sell why you're the right place, right guy for that place and why life is going to be great while you're there with this person. So I think Jim has to come in this year and kind of sell himself a little bit more. But I think he does that this year. Yeah, more than he has in the past. Jay, it was cool to see you and the rest of the Fox team supporting Jimmy in Jerry Jones's box for his uh, oh, Ring of awesome. Honor ceremony. The camaraderie is second to none when it comes to that Fox team. But yeah. uh, what happened uh, at the end of that game was certainly yeah. newsworthy, and I know a lot of insiders have been doing a lot of reporting on what happened there. The Lions came prepared with a lot of receipts saying they talked to the officials before the game that that play was coming, and there is circumstantial evidence of that player walking up to the official, and we don't know what's being said you there. You Jared Goff. Tell him to go over and make sure it's done. Yeah. yeah so what what is exactly going to be the result of this? It's seems as though whether he heard him or not that this would fall on the officials who screwed this up the, the results gonna be nothing and dan campbell and i talked about this we talked about this the, the next day i said do you gotta you know make sure that your your players know that it's not like they're going to overturn the results so somehow you got to get them to say okay this is going to happen we just got to move forward it's exactly what he you know he'd, he'd been you know three steps ahead already in, in doing that um, but you know, he was furious because he did, he did everything he was supposed to do. He laid it all out to them. And, and Dan is a very detail oriented guy. So I think that right there, like he knew he had done everything right. And, uh, you know, look, look, people are now saying, well, they, they try to fool the Cowboys. That That's fine. It, like every player you're trying to fool the other team, right? You're trying to disguise what you're doing. So I don't have a problem with them trying to disguise what they're doing to the Cowboys also, trying to confuse them, I think it's totally fine. And I think it's on the officials to make sure they get it right. But here's the thing, every week we're talking about the officials. And this is like, uh, you know, I have this talk with, you know, head coach after head coach after head coach. It's not going to stop until the NFL decides to say to the officials, hey, let's start calling it like the replacements did years ago where we just held back and let these guys do everything unless it was just completely blatant and obvious. You can call a penalty on every play, but the fact that the, the story every single week – but Jay, no, but, but of, we don't expect, I don't expect anything to change. But like, Jay, how do you? There, there's no fixing it. So at what point? No fixing it. But at, at what point does information guy Jay Glazer throw up his hands and say the game cannot be properly officiated? Period. No, the game can be properly officiated if you stop looking at every single thing. Like it's again, I just said like when the replacement refs were in there, it was great because it was like the league was just like, hey, just, just. You know, back off, don't be the story, unless something is completely clear and blatant and obvious. And right now, it's just, you know, it, like I said, it's, but it's it's not just this year, guys. It's been like this for the last several years, that officiating has just become the story. The officials should never, ever, ever be the story. It should never be. The product on the field of the players and the coaches, that should be the story, not the officials. Give me the historical precedent for Joe Flacco. <laughs> um Good question. Geno Smith. Hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, Geno kept playing, but, you know, not like that, um, you know, where he was just, he was away. But, yeah, I would say kind of a Geno Smith situation. But just, I mean, well, I was there at uh, Brown's practice or practicing in L.A., UCLA. And I went to go there to see uh, Kevin Stepanski and a bunch of guys. And Kevin walks over there and he says to me, how about Joe? I said, man, he's had all this rest. It just looks fresher than everybody else. It's unbelievable. And but at the time, it was kind of almost more of a joke. Like, man, how how great is this? this would be incredible. But 
I don't think he expected Joe Flacco to return to a Super Bowl kind of Joe Flacco. It was great. Uh, Jay, hey, by, the way, by the way, real quick, you brought the Jimmy Johnson thing because we just, you know, floated over that. I know you've known Jimmy for a long time. But, man, to, that was definitely one of the nights. I'm sitting up there in the suite with our whole crew, and it was one of the nights where I look up to to God, which I do a lot, and I'm like, thank you, my best friend, God Almighty, that I'm like – like five year old Jay, if I told him, Hey, you're gonna be sitting in a suite one time with <laughs> Jimmy Johnson and Howie Long, Terry Bradshaw, Michael Strand, Kurt Manip, you know, at Jerry Jones's box, and you're gonna be on the field for this, you know, ring of honor thing. Like, you gotta be kidding me. And the next day, obviously, I have Dwayne come out on our show and and The Rock and 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 he's talked to me about a lot how Jimmy would when Dwayne was, you know, 15 and getting a lot of trouble, and he started watching college football and said, Man, University of Miami. That's where I want to go. And it kind of helped save him, get him on the straight and narrow. And for him to be able to tell Jimmy that, it was such a sur- – like, Jimmy's given us some great surreal moments the last couple of years. But our crew is we're, – we're different. Like, we hang out constantly. We vacation together. We go – we spend every holiday together. We're, you know, godfathers of each other's kids. This will never happen again in TVA, I don't think. And, you know, it's because of how close we are. That was such an unbelievable – weekend man i i it was I, i'm still i think we're all still kind of kind of digesting it we're all in this text chain just how great it was let me explore this for a second with you jay because i have known jimmy for a long time and football has made him wildly wildly happy but getting away from how awful he had to be as a human being to coach successfully has yeah. given him great peace. It destroyed his relationship with Jerry Jones, and I did not believe they would ever get over the pettiness of it. Jimmy has said in the past, I will not be in that ring of honor while I'm alive. Jerry will never allow it. To see them late in life show gratitude toward each yeah. other after the silliness of what broke them apart, uh, yeah. you were close to something that uh, was was really moving. Jimmy does not... Jim, to see Michael Irvin and Emmett Smith not realize they're jostling an 80-year-old man who you need to be a little more <laughs> careful with because they're just... He's a young 80, though. Yeah, he, well, but he's a young 80, yeah. He, he's a young 80, but you saw my father has been jostled by, by people who are no. stronger than him. They forgot he's 80 because he's always been coach. <laughs> like, you were around a really special thing that night. No, and you know, and a few weeks earlier, myself, Jimmy, and Bill Richards, our producer... Uh, when our executive producer went to um, Cowboys Chargers uh, here in LA and on Monday night. And that's when Jimmy and Jerry kind of met. We all kind of were hanging on the sidelines. They met up. Those two had their own little private talk. And, and that's where the, the fences were mended. And for me to, and I've just kept my mouth shut the whole time. It's not my business to talk about. It's Jimmy's business, but I was able to see that firsthand as well. There's it, it's like, my career is amazing where, um, and I always tell this to like Howie Long, I'll say, hey, you know, I know we're supposed to act like we've been there before, but that I haven't. Like, this shit is cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's also cool, though, Jay, that you would experience the joys of gratitude yeah. in that moment, that while you're experiencing something that feels that good, you're also appreciative of it in a way that makes you Perfect. not skip right past uh, how yeah. amazing it is. Thank you for being here. I, I always try to do that. I always try and make sure that I understand it. And, and kind of live in that gratitude because it's easy to act like a lot of people, I think, act like, oh, yeah, we're going to act like we're, you know, this is just another day. It's not just another day. You didn't pay to cover the NFL like your dream job as a kid and 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 get these relationships with the greatest leaders of men in the history of sports. It's it's incredible. And it's not just that, Jay. They're your friends. What you're saying is rare is you guys are family. Yes. Like yeah. they know your secrets. They know all your bad stuff. Oh, yeah. And uh, and you <laughs> love each other despite it. It's very cool to see. It's been very cool to see you guys age on television together because it's clear every time we're watching it that everyone there loves each other. Uh, thank you, Jay. Good to see you again. Hey, they've aged on TV. I haven't. No, you have not. It's it's part of <laughs> yes, it's part of that serum, that ninety two dollar <laughs> serum that you use and the fact that <laughs> You don't let us, cologne, no. you it don't, was not cologne. And you don't show us the gray hair either. There'd be gray <laughs> hair if you weren't bald. You're cheating. Love you guys.